Welcome everyone to the sixth part in this video tutorial series about the Win32 API. So uh, we worked with uh, the images in the previous part and we had this static image control right here and the um, an image inside the button right here. Um, so in this part we're going to work with uh, the message box dialog. So uh, the message box is actually a dialog box which is um, used to notify the user and warn the user of uh, various situations in the program so one of the users you might want to see here is like I modify this file and I try to close it and it says uh, if, if I want to save this file um, so this is actually a message box so there this text present inside it save file new 19 is actually the text uh, text content of the message box and there is this icon so this is the icon which is present inside the message box and the caption text is on the top here which is save and it, ha it has three buttons, yes, no, and cancel. So we'll uh, now learn to create these message boxes for our Win32 application. So this is, we have actually uh, done this uh, previously, but uh, this time we'll do it in more detail. So this entire tutorial will be on message box, uh, on the message box dialog. So you can actually, uh, you can create the message box using the, uh, sorry, message box function or you can use the w postfix for unicode for w cares um, and it takes uh, one two three and four arguments so you might want to do this uh, after you've created the window but here we'll just do, do this for experimental purposes and um, we'll um, move uh, onwards to its other applications in a while so let's just create a simple message box so the first argument is the window handler of the owner window the window which will own the message box so actually if we keep it null then the message box belongs to no window um, and it'll just be independent and we can now um, put some text inside it so since it is the w post fix we need to use w cares so we'll use l prefix and then we'll say it'll be the text present inside it hello and then there's the caption which is displayed on the top then it'll just be high um, and then the fourth argument is the most important uh, actually all the first three arguments are optional you can pass null values into that into them but the fourth argument is compulsory and it is the type of the message box which actually defines how the message box is gonna look so the mb uh, prefixes will be used and there are various types of message boxes the one we're going to use is mb okay uh, we'll uh, have a look at the uh, various types of message boxes in a while, but we're just doing this uh, temporarily. So we'll just use the MBOK okay right now. Um, so there it goes. The message box is displayed as soon as the application starts because it was in the um, main uh, win main function. So there's the message box, the caption, the title, and uh, the text, and the OK button because the style of the message box was OK. Uh, and be okay so uh, we'll just remove this and we'll now move toward a better approach um, using the message boxes um, so we'll what we'll do is that we have sorry I just got to build this again so there um, we have this exit button exit menu item inside their file menu and as soon as we press this uh, the application closes So we might want to display a message to the user that if he really really wants to close the application So we can do this uh, when the mess uh, menu item is clicked So we go to the uh, add menus function where the me menu is created. So there it is the exit menu item so this has the identification as file menu exit um, this constant is defined up here and it is the case when the uh, file menu exit menu item is clicked is uh, handled here so we directly destroy the window when this is clicked but we'll not do this now we'll first print a message box um, so we'll use the w post fix and the first argument the uh, owner of this message box will be the parent window from which the message uh, which you are trying to close so that that'll be the argument which has been passed into it here so here this and the next argument will be the text present text so we'll just say our are you sure and the uh, next argument the caption will be wait and the type of the message box now we're going to have a look at the types of message boxes so there are actually various types of message boxes you can see here um, so the one we used here was that MB OK. So it has single button present inside it, which says OK. And you can also have MB Help, which has single button pre present inside it, saying Help. And the 
MB abort, retry and ignore has three buttons, the abort, the retry button and the ignore button. So three buttons. So similarly, the cancel, uh, try again and continue. So this says cancel, try, continue has three buttons, cancel, retry and uh, cancel, try again and continue. And similarly, the OK and cancel, retry and cancel, yes, no, yes, no and cancel. So you can use uh, any of these message boxes you want. So the one we're going to use here is yes or no because we are asking the user if he wants to really exit his application. So we'll use a yes and no text box so uh, yes and no message box so mb yes no which will display message box which will ask the user if he really wants to quit the application so we'll, we'll end on this now um, and you can see now as soon as we click the exit menu item it displays a message box asking us if we really want to close the application so are you sure I'll click no it does nothing but even if I click yes it it'll still do nothing because we do not have any functionality out here um, we'll uh, talk about the functionality in a while. The next thing we're going to look at is the um, icon of the message box. So there, the icon of the message box, there are actually various options. Icon hand, icon error, icon stop, icon question. So icon exclamation and icon warning display an exclamation mark on, on the screen. The icon information and icon asterisk display an, a lowercase i which stands for information on the screen. And the icon question displays a question mark. The icon stop, icon error and icon hand display a red colored cross on the screen. Um, which uh, stands for an error. So they're actually these are the images for all of these types. So I can hand, I can stop, and I can error show this. And similarly, the other other others. So uh, these also produce the sound um, corresponding to these icons. So the exclamation icon produce the exclamation sound or whatever. We'll just um, look at this now. Um, so you can use the icon exclamation or icon warning or uh, so we'll ju we'll just use the icon exclamation here. Um, so if you want to combine two arguments, the icon and the message box type, you can use the OR operator. So icon exclamation and yes, no, the, both of these arguments are combined. Uh, so the uh, message box will have both these properties. So now if, if we build and run this, <coughs> we'll have the message box here. So there, this is the icon uh, and the message box. So we have combined two arguments. And the next thing will be interact, uh, the interaction. So uh, if, if the user presses yes, then we'll close the application and if he presses no, we'll do nothing. So for that, we must uh, know, the, know that which button was actually pressed. So that is actually uh, identified by the return value of the message box function. So the mes message box get closed at the moment when the user presses one of its buttons. So and the message box function um, returns the value after the button has been pressed. So the value returned actually uh, corresponds to a button which was pressed. So if the first thing, if the function returns zero, that means the function failed. The function was not able to execute successfully. So if if this function returns zero, then that means it failed, and you can uh, handle that however however you, however you want. But the thing we're going to discuss here is the uh, getting other values for the buttons. So there there uh, the return type is integer. It, it is obvious, and so we'll declare an int well um, um, an integer in the starting of the function so that we can use it here so we'll just assign well the value which was returned by the message box function and now we can compare the value of well against the integer values which correspond to the buttons so if the abort button was pressed um, the integer value is actually three but you do also have constants defined by the api so you can um, instead of using the integer literals you can directly use the these constants this these things um, so id abort if the abort button was pressed, then ID cancel, continue, ignore, no, okay, retry, try again, and yes. Um, so you can actually check all of these buttons. So we want to check if the yes button was pressed, so we'll use the ID yes. So here it is, and now we'll use the if block to check the if the val, was e uh, val is equal to ID yes. That means the yes button was pressed when this message box was displayed. So if yes was pressed, then we can we have to quit the application. So now we'll use this code here. Destroy window. So we'll destroy this window when it the um, IDS and uh, the yes button was pressed. Um, in, you can also handle the else if uh, using the um, when id no was pressed well equal to id no but since we do not have any tasks to perform here i'll just leave this empty so we can do stuff if you want to do anything here but i'll do nothing because this is not really relevant and now i can build the, build on the application to show you how this is working 
So now I'll click exit and if I click no, then it doesn't do anything. But if I click yes, then it closes the application. So this is working. And we'll just remove this from here because this is not relevant. We don't have any code inside. And the next thing we wanna do is we wanna create another message box for the stuff I'll just show you here. Um, and you can see the generate button generates the data according to the information entered here. Um, so what we wanna do is if in case the user has left this empty and presses the generate button, we want to present the user with various options that if he wants uh, that this is an error and if the user now wants to exit the application, uh, if he wants to abort the application or if he wants to retry entering the data or if he wants to process the empty data anyway. So we'll just uh, uh, do that. So we'll first go to the generate button. So <clears throat> it is here and the constant for the generate button is the identification the identification is generate button so we have to find this um, here and we are handling this case right here and we are processing all the information here um, we are reading the um, contents of the uh, labels uh, of the uh, sorry um, of the text boxes edit boxes uh, inside these name uh, age name and age string so we'll check after reading these strings we'll check if the name and age are empty so we'll just um, so we'll use this strcmp function to compare two strings. Um, there we included the std uh, lib dot h for this function. We use some function for the from the std lib in the previous part, and this function actually uh, the uh, strcmp is also a part of the std lib. So it takes two arguments. It uh, um, both are this, both are of the type strings, and it compares both of those arguments. And if those uh, strings are equal, it returns zero. So we'll check if name equals an empty string if the name equals an empty string it'll return zero so this uh, so this whole condition will be true if the name is equal to the uh, equal is equal to the empty string and um, we'll also ch uh, check this for the age if age equals empty string there it goes so if any if so if either of the strings are empty we now need to display the message box so we'll just message box w and the window handler and the text and the caption uh, remember if you keep the caption um, argument null then the default caption is uh, error so it'll say error in the caption area and the fourth argument the type of the message box so we can choose one from here um, there are the types of the message boxes so we'll use the abort retry and ignore type here um, here mb abort retry ignore so this is the one we're going to use this here um, and we'll store the return value inside the same val variable because we defined it in the scope of this function so we can also use it for this so you can actually do, do this that you can define a single variable uh, for the use with all the message boxes so we have the val, uh, val variable here and now we can uh, we'll use a switch statement this time to compare because we need to compare it to three different cases so the first case will be id um, abort if the abort button is pressed we'll simply close the application so we'll uh, We'll call the destroy window function. We'll destroy this window, the parent window, which um, um, the window whose window procedure we are in currently. So we'll destroy the window and we'll break now. Um, and we'll move on to the next case. The next button was retry. Um, so if the retry button was pressed, we'll use the ID. Sorry, ID retry. If the retry button was pressed, that means the user wants to try again. So we do not want to process any data and we want to go back um, to where we were. So we'll just return out of this function. So we'll just return out of this window procedure so that this uh, calculation does not occur. And the last remaining case is ID ignore. So in case the ignore button was pressed, that means the user wants to uh, ignore anything uh, ignore any error and wants the data to be processed anyways so um, it'll if the ignore button was pressed the application will just process the uh, empty data so we'll call break here so you can see the uh, difference between the return and break the return will um, 
return um, so the return will actually uh, exit the whole function it will just uh, terminate the window procedure but the break will just uh, terminate this uh, switch statement so if the ignore was pressed these things will be uh, these uh, the code here will be executed but if the retry button was pressed uh, um, the these all uh, all of this code will not be executed because it will just straight away return out of this function so we can actually now uh, check if this is working um, and we do not have any errors fortunately and now we'll try so if you fill the strings if you fill the um, edit boxes it generates the data successfully but in case if the data is incomplete then then we click the generate button it uh, displays an error message saying you did not enter anything and uh, if I place a uh, press abort it closes the application and in the next case we'll try uh, Oh, sorry uh, in the next case we'll try retry so if, it, if I press the retry button it uh, does not generate anything and gives me another chance to try and enter the data again and if I press the ignore button it'll ignore the error and it'll generate the data anyway with with the empty data which I entered here with the empty strings it'll generate the data anyway if I ignore the error and uh, to make this message box look more fancy you can um, combine this uh, um, button style with MB icon error. So icon error will display a black, uh, a red colored cross and it'll pr uh, produce an error sound. So there it is. Uh, you do not enter anything and there is this fancy icon here. Uh, so I'll press a board and it'll close it. So this is all for this uh, video tutorial and um, stay tuned for the next part and I'll see you next time.